Well, hello and welcome to our thought for the day for Tuesday, the 23rd of June. Uh, my name is Graham Hoslett. Um, I don't know if you've got a favourite place or a special place. I don't know if there's a place that you love to return to. A place you love to go, a place you like, or even where you long to be. I don't suppose I've got any particular special places, to be honest. Um, I like going up the mount here in Guildford. You get such a wonderful view over all of Guildford, as far as the ash ranges to the west and north over Guildford to Woking and beyond Heathrow and North London on a clear day. On the mount, you can see the Wembley Arch in North London. And then looking to the east, you can see, well, the Gherkin and all the way round to Canary Wharf. I think as even as far round as Kent. I do like being up on the mount, it's a marvellous view. It's, it's difficult to feel hemmed in when you're standing on the mount looking north. But I suppose for me my special place is probably sitting at my desk or sitting here in the garden with my Bible, uh, reading my daily readings beginning the day uh, with the Lord. I never really feel the day has started properly until I've had a few minutes reading and praying. So, so I suppose that's my special time, my special place, where I like and where I long to be. Um, in Psalm 84, the psalmist writes of his special place. And maybe it should come as no surprise that the place he most wants to go, where he most wants to be, is where at that time his God was said to dwell. Psalm 84 verse 1 and 2, How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. I mean, in the same way as the psalmist then longed to be able to spend time with his God in his temple, well, just at the moment, we might find ourselves really missing and really wanting church. Of course, we understand now that the church is not really the building, but the people. Paul's words in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16, he, he, he said to them, Don't you know that you yourselves are God's temple and that God's spirit lives in or among you? And the you is plural. We together are the temple. So in 1 Peter 2 verses 4 and 5 as we read as you come to him the living stone rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious to him you also like living stones are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Together we are his temple. But going on to, to, to speaking of the need for personal purity in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul sorts of, sort of repeats himself with a slightly different emphasis. He says, do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? Uh, together we are God's temple as a church body together, but also as individual believers, our bodies are each individually temples of the Holy Spirit too. Each of us indwelt, each of us temples, all of us being built together into a spiritual house to be a holy priest, priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. You know, maybe looking at yourself in the mirror you struggle to say, how lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. But, but really, how remarkable each of us is. Each of us, believing in the Lord Jesus, indwelt by his Spirit. You are a temple of the Holy Spirit. But over the next few days and weeks, hopefully with a gradual lifting of restrictions, there will be a gradual return for many of us to church. So Psalm 84 goes on, the psalmist speaking with something like 
wonder in his voice. He says, even the sparrow has found a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may have her young, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Um, even the sparrow. Sparrows, the cheapest and most ordinary of birds, ten a penny. But even the sparrow, the psalmist says, has found a home in the temple. And even the swallow has found a nest for herself where she may raise her young. And not just anywhere in the temple courts, a place near your altar, Lord Almighty, my King and my God. Now, you might not feel very special, but Psalm 84 says that even the smallest and the most common of birds were flitting in and out. Now, when I was a teenager, I loved watching the birds feeding in our back garden in Bognor. Sometimes I, wish to I, I used to wish I was a bird, not having to worry about exams, not having a care in the world, able to just fly away. Uh, but then I'd see our neighbour's cat stalking the pigeons and I'd be glad I wasn't a bird. But how the writer of Psalm 84 wishes he was a bird, one of those sparrows or swallows, able to live permanently in the temple, able to just, to, able to just be able to flit in and out, raising his young right there at the centre of things. But this is the thing, now there is no physical temple as such. We can make pilgrimage into the Lord's presence and make our home right there in the Lord's presence because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, wherever we are, whenever we need to. Verses 5 to 7 of Psalm 84 go on. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. You don't have to buy an, an air ticket to go on pilgrimage. You can just sit in your chair, close your eyes and pray to the Lord. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. Verse 6, as they pass through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The, the Valley of Baca, well, we don't know exactly which valley this was on the way to Jerusalem. A number of valleys have been suggested. But the name Baca comes from a Hebrew word meaning weeping. And in 2 Samuel 5 verse 23, the word Baca is used to describe balsam trees, which typically enjoy dry, even arid places. Whichever valley that the valley of Baca was, it was, it was probably a dry place, quite possibly a place only normally dampened by tears. Maybe you might feel you're in such a place at the moment. But the psalmist says those whose strength is in the Lord, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage, not only have the strength for the journey they have to make, but they bring blessing even to the driest, most troublesome of places and moments as they pass through. As they pass through the Valley of Baca, they make, make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. And Psalm 84 verse 7 has a wonderful promise. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. There's a certainty about the arrival in God's presence for all who set their hearts on being there. So verses 10 to 12 say, better is one day in your courts, he's speaking to the Lord, than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked, for the Lord God is a sun and shield. I've had to put my hat on today because the sun is so bright. The Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those whose way of life is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Uh, wherever your special place might be, may God bless you this day in it. 
If you can't travel there yourself at the moment, close your eyes. Go there in your mind and in your heart and allow God to be present with you, even there. Amen.